We saw the main great wall yesterday, and today we're gonna see an even more historic relic. But first, we're gonna grab breakfast, and breakfast today is gonna be yang zha mutton offals. So mutton offals are usually called yang zha shui, often shortened to yang zha or zha shui. For many Westerners, especially Americans, their first encounter with Chinese food is zha shui, better known abroad as chop shui a dish consisting of an assortment of ingredients with or without innards. <laughs> Regarding the emergence and popularity of chop suey in the US, one tale revolves around a visit to the States by Qing Dynasty official Li Hongzhang, an influential but controversial figure whose own story is intertwined with Tianjin. Said Culinary mythology has since then been disproved as a marketing ploy to capitalize on his highly publicized trip. However, said marketing ploy worked. It was a success, and shops toting the Hongzhang chop suey sprang up everywhere. I'm going to an account by Liang Qichao. Um, back then, Americans never visited Chinatown, but now they come in large numbers, like schools of fish. In New York City alone, there are three to four hundred chop suey shops. Who is Liang Qichao? A similar figure whose own story is entwined with Tianjin and who left quite a legacy in his sons, including Liang Sicheng, renowned as the father of modern Chinese architecture and also acclaimed as an architectural historian. And one of uh, Liang Sicheng's first forays into ancient Chinese architecture took place about 100 meters that way at Gu Le Temple. This temple is full of mysteries. First of all is the name Du Le or Solitary Joy. But perhaps the bigger mystery is construction. It has been ascertained that the original temple dates back to early Tang Dynasty, but no one knows which year to be exact. There's a story about Tang forces passing by here and rush to defeating Gogorio, but the dates don't match up. Unfortunately, there is no longer any Tang era structure standing here today. The oldest extant buildings were built during the Liao Dynasty, namely Guan Yin Pavilion, the complex's main building, and Shanmen, literally Mountain Gate, referring to the complex's main gate. The relationship between the two is intricate. According to Tianjin University architecture professor Ding Yao, the spot where pilgrims kneel down inside the main gate is also the spot where the gatekeeper statues gaze at. When a new pilgrim looks up, Guan Yin Pavilion is perfectly framed by the entryway. And if timing is right and window unclosed, the pilgrim could see the eyes of the Guan Yin inside through an opening on the pavilion's second floor. The pavilion was built for the statue and fits the Guan Yin like a bespoke suit. As depicted in this cross-section as found inside a book by Taiwan province author and scholar Li Qianliang, the pavilion's structural design puts you in a position where the statue can be seen in its entirety, visually creating a towering and imposing Guan Yin. No photography allowed inside, so you just have to use your imagination. Sent to the second floor, the Guan Yin's benevolent expression is revealed. Follow her sight and something else is revealed, the Jijiao White Pagoda. It is located about 500 meters away straight down an alley. Due to proximity and its almost perfect alignment with the Guan Yin Pavilion, some believe the White Pagoda was previously a portion of a larger Dula Temple complex. There are several White Pagodas slash stupas in the adjoining city of Beijing. However, the Jida White Pagoda is older and it is unique in mounting different architectural styles. Built in 1058, it is another Liao Dynasty relic, erected several decades after Dula Temple. Reconstruction of the Dula Temple took place in 984, but there's no detailed record of the construction. Perhaps this lack of documentation is what kept Dula Temple under the radar until 1931, when Japanese architect Sekino Tadashi spotted it on its way to the eastern Qing tombs in nearby Junhua. For some reason, he just took a few photos and moved on. It was Liang Sicheng who first studied the complex and identified that these are some of the oldest surviving wooden structures in China which he remarked as inheriting Tang Dynasty tradition from before and inspiring Song Dynasty construction thereafter. See those interlocking wooden brackets? They are called Dougong or Tokyo in Japanese and are a hallmark of Chinese architecture. 
since China is the cradle of East Asian civilization, it provided the foundation from which derived the architectures, languages, customs, food celebrations, etc. of neighboring nations, in particular Japan and Korea. For this reason, Japanese architects like Ito Chuta and the forecessor Kino Tadashi traveled across China to look for their roots, in the words of Tsinghua architecture scholar Wang Nan. Dogong evolved after transmitting to Japan, and Dogong evolved in China too. Dogong turned smaller and basically ornamental in Ming and Qing dynasties. While Tang architects made use of bigger Dogong like these, and the bigger supports also allowed for the bigger eaves. Look at those corners that extend far and wide like the spread wings of a phoenix, protruding farther out than the length of the pillars beneath, which were added by Qing dynasty builders, by the way. Are the columns necessary or needless? I don't know, but the temple has survived over 20 earthquakes, including the powerful Tangshan earthquake nearby. Although a work of the Kitan led Liao dynasty, Dulu Temple was essentially Tang, just like many other aspects of Liao society, from pottery and religion to imperial examination. When people come to the real beautiful China, come to picturesque and quaint Jijiao district and see this unique Tang architecture of Liao dynasty. Zai jian.